All right, so we're gonna continue with part two, but before I do that, let me just clarify some things from part one. First of all, I did make an error when I stated that nurses perform swallow evaluations. That is incorrect. As nurses working in the ICU, working in the emergency room, we can perform a swallow screen. Far different than a swallow eval. Swallow evaluations are performed by speech therapists who are highly trained in multiple areas of like dysphagia, aphasia, cognitive like deficits. That's speech's thing. So we leave that to them. The other piece I want to clarify and this is because someone commented to let me know that the patient had actually gone down to have a CAT scan. It wasn't a PET scan, it wasn't an MRI. She was down there to get a CAT scan. So I just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, back to Ms. Redonda. So Redonda agrees that on her way to the emergency room, she would stop and administer the sedative. You know, this case right here offers so many opportunities for learning. And I think a lot of the learning points were missed in a lot of the critique that was done, a lot of the, you know, the assessment of this entire case. A lot of pieces were missed, which is why I felt like it would be a good discussion for us to have. So number one, the patient was downgraded possibly to go to med surge or the patient was pending discharge from the hospital. Meaning that when she went downstairs to the scanner, if she was already downgraded from the ICU, it's a high possibility she traveled off the floor without a cardiac monitor. Also, patients that are downgraded to med surge or patients who are pending discharge, they're usually not a candidate for sedation because they're getting ready to go home. Also, certain med surge units, there are certain meds that cannot be administered to a patient that's on that level of care. So meaning that if the patient's on a med surge unit, there are just certain drugs you can't give the patient. Why? Because the nurses working on that unit is not trained to do that kind of monitoring. And if the patient is in the ICU and the patient has been downgraded, why are we giving them like meds that can possibly cause not possibly, that will cause changes in their neurological status. So that to me too was another missed point. For example, if someone says to me, oh, the patient's in the scanner, but the patient's downgraded to med surge, my first question would be, well, why are we giving the patient Versed? You know, why not a PO Ativan? Like, why not something PO by mouth? Why are we giving IV sedation to a patient who's downgraded for a CAT scan that's not an emergency? That would be the first thought coming to my mind, but I also have to remember that in comparison to Redonda, Redonda became a nurse in 2015, and I believe this incident took place in 2017. So Redonda had been a nurse for two years. So what this tells me too is that being familiar with policy is something that's lacking in a lot of newer nurses. When I became a nurse, the nurses that trained me had been nurses for like 30, 25 years. And the one thing that they were really big on was having me sit, look policy up, and read it in our downtime. They would say to me, look up the policy on Foley catheter insertion. Look up the policy on central line insertion. The reason why you have to familiarize yourself with hospital policy, especially when it comes to taking care of patients, is because as a nurse, you are also an advocate for your patient. Meaning that if you notice that a procedure is being performed on your patient, and sterile technique is being broken or the physician is not following a specific protocol, you as the nurse have to speak up. And how do you back up your, in, your intervention? How do you say to this doctor, no, this is not supposed to be done this way? You would be able to do that because you are familiar, familiar with the policy. So knowing policy is very important. And I urge those of you who are new nurses, take some time. I used to print the policies home policies out at work and take them home with me and review them when I was a new nurse. So anyway, back to the issue of Redonda now. So Redonda goes to the medication dispensing cabinet. You know, there's a variety of different brands. It can be Pixis, it can be Omnicell, you know, different institutions use different dispensing cabinets. At this time, apparently, 
Vanderbilt was going through an overhaul of their the system that they were using to dispense medicines. I don't know if it was the computer system or if they were in the process of changing out the drawers that they were using. Whatever the case is, Redonda had to override to get access to that medication. So this is how it works at the bedside, right? Normally the physician places an order, a medication order, right? He puts the order in. Pharmacy gets a notification to review the order. Pharmacy has to review it to make sure the patient doesn't have any allergies, that the dosing is correct, so on and so forth. Once pharmacy approves it, it is now available for you to pull it from the medication dispensing system. If that medication is not stocked in the medication dispensing system, we usually have to request it for phar from pharmacy and wait for pharmacy to either deliver it by hand or send it through a tube station. In this case, the sedative that was being used is called Versed. That's the trade name, Versed. But the generic name is Midazolam. And usually that is stored on the floor in the medication dispensing bin. We do not have to wait for pharmacy to send it up unless it's coming in the form of a drip, like it's in an IV bag that we actually have to hang and infuse. But Redonda was pulling the vial of Versed. So that would be stocked in the medication dispensing um, bin. So I don't know the conversation that Redonda had with this nurse, whether it was a situation of, oh no, it's okay, I'll pull the med, or whether the nurse off offered to pull the med, Redonda was like, no, it's okay, I can pull it, let me show the student how to do it, I don't know what took place, because Redonda was the one who ended up pulling the medication. When Redonda went to pull that medicine, I don't know if the medication had been approved by pharmacy, I don't even know if Redonda accessed the computer system to see the order with her own eyes. That yes, the physician ordered you know, five, four of Versed or two milligrams of Versed. I don't know if she said to that primary nurse, okay, I can give it, but let me look at the order in the computer so that I can make sure that I eyeball the order and that I see that it's written and I can determine whether or not pharmacy has already approved it, making it available for me to pull from the machine. I don't know what to place. All I know is that Redonda went to the medication dispensing cabinet and what happens a lot of times is that some drugs, we have to override it because it's not yet populated to that patient's chart or because it's considered a drug that can be used in an emergency, you have to like, override it. So that's what Redonda did. She went ahead and she overrode the drug. Now, the problem with overriding medicine is that there's not an order. It hasn't populated yet in the system. The second thing with overriding medication in this case was that Vanderbilt's medication dispensing bin, and I'm sorry if I'm all over the place, but I'm trying to gather my thoughts. But anyway, the medication dispensing bin only required the nurses to punch in the first two letters of the drug's name. So the drug that Redonda pulled is called Versed. So all Redonda had to type in was V-E and up came a list of all the meds that started with V-E. Now that is very dangerous because Versed is not the only drug that starts with a V followed by an E. There, there are more, there's a lot of drugs that starts with that, um, those first two letters. So when Redonda typed in VE, a slew of medicines came up. And I am not sure exactly what Redonda selected, but she clearly did not select Versed. Like this, I don't know, there's so much gray area because also in some medication dispensing bins, cabinets, some of them go by the, you can type in the generic name or you can type in the, the trade name. And I'm thinking that Redonda probably didn't even know the generic name, which is Midazolam, which is why she typed in VE Versed. So that is the reason why. Like in nursing school, I was trained, like my professors were hard on us. We had to know the generic name. We had to know the trade name. Like for almost all of the medicines, we had to know it. And we had to be able to like regurgitate that information at any given time. They can ask you on the spot, what's the trade name for this? And you should know it. So Redonda typed in the VE, 
and what she selected, the drug that she pulled, was actually Vecaronium, because Vecaronium starts with VE. Now, most of you who are, who are familiar with the case, and for those of you who are not familiar with the case, Vecaronium is a paralytic agent. It is not a sedative. It's a paralytic. And yes, in ICU settings, emergency room settings, surgery, of course, anesthesia, operating room, a paralytic can be administered with, to a patient depending on what's the overall outcome, what's the overall goal or the overall plan for this patient. For example, in an ICU setting, we can administer, not we, not nurses. Well, it depends. So as a nurse, I can hang a paralytic via an infusion bag and I can determine the titration of that paralytic based on a specific assessment that we do called the train of fours, right? That's a whole nother thing. I'm not getting into that. But anyway, to push a paralytic via an IV, like I mean to draw it up from the vial and push it, that has to be done by a physician. And the reason why the physician would be pushing a paralytic, it would be to intubate a patient. It can be, um, you know, a physician can, can, can administer a dose of a paralytic if we're trying to achieve vent synchrony until we actually get um, the infusion drip from the, from the pharmacy for us to hang as nurses. There's different reasons why, you know, a, a paralytic would be pushed. But in this case, we're talking about the fact that Redonda pulled the wrong medication from the medication dispensing cabinet. And I know a lot of people are like, well, you know, whenever you're administering medications as a nurse, we all learn about the six rights of medication administration. There are six rights. And those of you who are nursing students, you should already know those rights. But part of administering medication is that you must, as a nurse, read the label. You must look at the label, read it to ensure that you're pulling the correct medication, that the dose on the medication that you're pulling is correct, and that you have the right form. So instead of pulling a sedative, Versed, also known as midazolam, Redonda pulls a paralytic called Vecaronium. So I explained to you guys how that error occurred because she only typed in VE. So some dispensing machines, before you can even access the list of drugs, you have to type in sometimes up to four letters of the drug's name in order for it to bring it up. Because what that does is it narrows the chances of you making an error. So for example, if Redonda had typed in V-E-R-S, Versed more than likely would have populated. But because she only typed in V-E, the machine is like, okay, well here, here goes everything. Now, in her defense, her lawyers were basically saying that the hospital, that's the hospital's fault because the, those machines, you should never be allowed to access medications by just typing in two letters. And I agree with that. But the one thing about being a nurse and the one thing that they drive home in nursing school, and those of you who are nurses, you, you know this, is that it doesn't matter what the machine does. It doesn't matter what the pharmacist said. It doesn't matter if Jesus Christ is sitting in the room and tell you to administer that drug. Ultimately, you as the nurse, you are responsible for any drug you administer to a patient. You are going to own it if there's a sentinel event, if um, an allergic reaction happened. You're going to own it, especially if you bypassed protocols such as not adhering to the six medication rights, such as not waiting for the pharmacy to approve the medication and then pulling it. Like, nurses, you just have to be really careful, okay? You just have to be really careful with any drug, okay? Because you can give Tylenol and someone could have an adverse reaction to that. Let me just say that. But yeah, so Redonda pulled the wrong drug. She pulled a paralytic agent. And for those of you who are not too familiar with like nursing and medicine and giving certain drugs, whenever we administer a paralytic, what it does, it basically paralyzes the patient. It paralyzes the patient. Paralyzes all of the muscles 
including your diaphragm, which is responsible for your, your breathing. You know, the diaphragm, it expands whenever you take a deep breath in. And then it, you know, it, what's the other word? What's the opposite of expand? I don't even know. But basically, the diaphragm is paralyzed, meaning that the lungs are like, I'm not getting any air. I'm not going to take no breath because you paralyzed me. Before we paralyze a patient, the patient has to be on, the patient should be getting ready or already on a ventilator. So that way the ventilator is doing the breathing for them. The ventilator is now the one doing the work of the diaphragm and of the lungs. The patient should also be properly sedated because again, a paralytic is much different than a sedative. When we paralyze patients in the ICU, the patient is always on a ventilator. Always, because if you don't, you're going to stop the person from being able to breathe, which in turn will mean the person life ends, right? So the patient must be on a ventilator when you paralyze them and the patient must have adequate sedation because if you don't adequately sedate them, you can paralyze a patient who is cognitively alert, knows everything that's going on hear everything that you're saying, but they just can't move and they can't respond while they're on a ventilator. So adequate sedation is necessary. And there's an assessment that we do. I mentioned it earlier. Okay. We have to have a RAS of negative four. We must also document a train of four. I think it's every four hours. Usually we check the train of four to make sure that the patient is adequately sedated while under that paralytic. So that's the reason why this case was so serious because ultimately, you know, God rest her soul, Miss Charlene Murphy, the patient who, you know, who lost her life because of the medication era, she basically suffocated in that CAT scan machine. She basically suffocated. And it's not a quick suffocation. It's not quick because you want to think about it. You push the medicine. The medicine, I don't know, of course, I'm not an anesthetist. I, I'm not a critical care doctor. I don't, I should have my drug book handy, but I don't know like the half-life and how fast, you know, the onset and so on and so forth. But I'm sure she probably felt like shit. I can't move my hands. I can't move my feet. Wide awake in that scanner, but paralyzed. So that is the reason why it was definitely a horrible way for that patient to go. So, so Redonda pulls the drug and these are gems I'm giving you guys. Okay. Those of you who are nurses or nursing students, new nurses, new grads, getting ready to take your NCLEX, just pass your NCLEX. Whenever you pull a drug from the medication bin, whenever you have to administer a medicine, that's going to alter the patient's neurological status, respiratory status, any kind of alterations, any drug that's a controlled substance. My practice as a nurse, because it's very important to develop not only boundaries for your practice, but you also have to develop your practice and don't stray from it. Okay. One of the things that I do is I always have another nurse eyeball the medication with me and eyeball the dose. Even if a cosigner is not required for me to administer the medication, I always want to have someone else eyeball it just in case, because this goes back to nursing being a toxic profession. There's been instances where a patient might have a sudden change in status. The patient suddenly becomes hypoglycemic. The patient suddenly, you know, becomes confused or whatever the case is. Nurses have a tendency to question the nurse taking care of that patient, sometimes behind that nurse's back. Like, I don't know, the patient was fine. I know she said she gave insulin, but how, you know, suppose, I wonder if she gave too much. I wonder if this happened. Like, <laughs> nursing is so toxic like your colleagues will be there wondering if you contributed to that patient's change in status 
or you know something happening to that patient they're, they're all well how much did you give or did you do this did you do that like I've seen it happen so for me because I don't want any problems and like I said the nursing school that I went to they instilled a lot of things in us a lot of like safeguards and stuff like that that we should practice on the floor that let's just say my patient the doctor says oh give the patient 0.5 of Ativan it's ordered it's cleared by pharmacy I can pull it from the med bin I find another nurse hey I'm giving my patient 0.5 of Ativan but I think for Ativan I would need a cosigner but even if I didn't need a cosigner I still want for you to see it here go the vial right here here goes the syringe this is how much I drew up this two milligrams come in the syringe I'm pulling up this is 0.5 milligrams this is 0.25 mls because I don't want no problems I don't want no problems I want for if in case something were to happen to that patient I want for someone to be able to say no she pulled up the right dose because y'all are not going to get me jammed up y'all not gonna get me jammed up questioning whether or not I pulled the right dose or the what how much I gave the patient Nah, I don't play those games not at all I've seen too much I've worked in healthcare since 2005 before I decided to go to nursing school, I was a nursing assistant. I worked in a hospital specifically just so I can see if I can tolerate working in a hospital. I've seen a lot of things.